Hey guys, VBAD here with another V plays, and we're not necessarily looking at the Focke Wolf 190 as much as we're just kind of looking at a concept I was messing with. And it's the idea that uh, when we start talking about optimum altitudes and engine power and stall speeds, I think that there's some nuance in there that compiled together you start to get a better understanding of how these aircraft behave. And particularly the optimum altitude versus the maximum altitude because we know that once you get above your optimum altitude and you start getting into the yellow numbers on the right hand side you start to lose engine power right that's how the game balances itself you know that thing is only tuned for these altitude blocks man you can't go any higher well once we start going higher what does that actually do? What's the res what's the effect on the aircraft, and and what's the rate of loss in particular? So now, bam, we're going to be hitting into the yellow in just a second here, and our max altitude is actually going to be at 11,000. So that's pretty high for tier seven. So yeah, we lost some power, but between this 5,200 and this 1,100. How much was that loss actually? And that's kind of what I wanted to explore here. So I've been operating these multi rolls at a higher altitude and what kind of brought me to the idea to even look at this was actually the uh, Hawker Hunter because that thing was just doing great up at higher altitudes and I was kind of surprised by it. But honestly the reason I think that is is because it actually has a really high max altitude and in contrast with its optimum altitude its amount of loss is going to be much less than what you would normally anticipate there we go so here we have, we've been operating at this 6,000 foot mark for a while here, and as long as we aren't making any drastic climbs, which I'm actually about to do now, the thing behaved just fine. It didn't seem to really hate it. It, it has the power. I mean, obviously the Focke Wolf 190D is a very strong airframe. Let's go ahead and start that cooling on our engine here. So it is capable of performing fairly well. One of those is the player. And the other nice thing about being up at higher altitudes is I'm not going to have to contend with as many turny fighters as you normally have to deal with when you're flying in a multi roll. I've always kind of described multi rolls as like a lower altitude heavy aircraft because they can't outturn anything, but they have the firepower and the engine power to be able to outrun most things. But now we're putting ourselves in a completely different environment. If any of these turny aircraft want to come up to try and meet me, they're going to be putting themselves at a much steeper power loss than I would be facing here. With the exception of a high altitude fighter like this P-51. Whoa, okay, what are you? Yak9U, I cannot outturn you, but maybe I can get these guns on target. Yep, you made a stupid bot turn decision, that happens all the time. I've actually taken my uh, equipment off of here that made this thing a little bit more nimble and put it all into engine power just because I wanted this thing to be able to do what we've been doing with it here. Because I figure, why am I trying to make myself more turny at a lower altitude? And what I really should be doing is making myself more viable for being able to uh, put the enemy out of where they're supposed to be. I'm also getting a handle on the lead on these guns. I feel like the more you fly something, the better you get. Weird, right? Something about practice, practice. 
We are definitely not winning this match though. Uh, we were out of Mustang 1A right from the beginning here. I kind of figured this is the way this was going to go, but... Yeah. Let's just not die in the zone here. go. Apparently I ended up killing that one guy through a burnout. I don't think we're getting away from Sith though, which is not surprising. It's okay. Hey Sith, we got your airfield. I'm going to spawn at our normal spawn and I'm going to head in from the north to the southern sector. Hopefully the enemy will redirect towards the airfield, and I think that'll put us in a better spot. I know I'm kind of leaving our other northern area up for a sacrifice, but usually having a, a fast, rapid offense is better than a continual defense, because that's kind of what got us into this position to begin with. Yep, and as suspected, things are starting to vacate the area. Nice, we did capture this zone. That is good. Hang in there. You'll soon be cut off from support. I say again, support will not be available. That'll do. Keep it up. Good with a little lead. Slow down, maybe we can get in the squall line. Five, four, three. The enemy is launching rocket strikes on our complex. Try to neutralize yep, that'll the work. enemy military base. Yep, he's going for good. There's a heavy storm here. Unable to proceed. Return into base. Okay, now we gotta be much more cautious as to what we engage. We'll let our boost build back up. I see you, Sith, but hopefully you're not going to climb up here, and if you do, I think it'll put you in a bad energy state. We keep our bomber alive. That's also another good avenue. I've been trying uh, the idea of... I know I'm, I'm not a ground attacker. I can help flip zones a little bit. But if I can keep the ground attackers alive, you'd be surprised what they're capable of. Okay, we still got a bit of altitude on these guys, which is good. Let's maintain that and let's help out with the capture of this zone. See any named players? I'd like to take them out, but oh, game over. over. Yep, and that kind of emphasizes how you can still win even without a player on your team. So that worked out well for us. And I guess, uh, I guess when you drop out, it looks like you uh, you died and were knocked out of the battle. I noticed that that uh, IL-8 wasn't around when we looked at the menu there, but let's uh, go back to the hangar and I'll show you what I was talking about with the numbers a little bit more detail, uh, and particularly at the Hunter, which is what kind of drew me to this conclusion. We're almost done with this thing, by the way. I cannot wait to get rid of it. Uh, we need 108,000. We've already got the 152, but then we can unlock the BVP 210 and we can start messing around with some bat wings. But yeah, let's uh, take a look at a multi-roll that operates at higher altitude and seems to really love it. Uh, this thing hits its optimum altitude at 5,900, but has a service ceiling of <clears throat> 13,000. So based on that ratio, like if I'm at 8,000, I'm not even close to the max altitude. So I may have lost some engine power, but 
I haven't lost enough. So as long as I'm not trying to go into the vertical in that situation, it's a good spot to kind of hunt from, thus the hunter, to then dive on a target. Uh, and that's really what I think I'm looking at here. Now, another comparison, I got another multi-roll here. Uh, a little bit lower on the service ceiling for the F-84, which is why the F-84 probably feels like it's losing a lot more engine power as you get above that 5906, which coincidentally is the same maximum optimal altitude for this aircraft. And then the F-7U is identical to the Hunter. They're nearly, they're nearly exactly the same in climb rate as well. There's only a one foot per second difference uh, in the favor of the F-7U. But again, this aircraft, I haven't experimented with climbing with this thing up outside of its normal altitude performance either. And that's just something to, to throw in there in the mix as well. And then stall speed, I think, is important as well, because that means that when you're up at those higher altitudes and you are kind of on that edge with the engine power, can you maintain enough to be able to maintain a good turn? Turn, as well as keeping the aircraft from falling out of the sky. So with a stall speed of 145 and a minimum optimal speed for turning at 205, uh, and then comparing that to the F7U, you'll see that the F7U needs to be maintaining 217 in order for this thing to be able to uh, make its best turn radius, but its stall speed's lower at 124 compared to the 149 of the Hunter. And then, of course, uh, another comparison here is going to be the F-84, which can get down to 186 and still maintain uh, its degree of control for its optimum airspeed for the turn, while its stall speed is going to be 124. So I've been looking at these numbers and kind of analyzing and trying to figure out a pattern as to, like, obviously they build the airframes in the computer program, and when you're looking at those programs, you're just kind of doing the calculus and seeing, okay, what inputs did they put into here to make the aircraft behave the way that they do? Because ultimately these are, these are essentially skins, right? Like a box flying through the air that they've shaped into the form of an aircraft for hitboxes. But how does it actually perform the way that it performs? And a lot of it, it's all based on these numbers and some hidden stats, I'm sure. But with what we have available, we can tease out a little bit more details and understand where there might be some hidden strengths in some of these platforms because I'm sure that the guys over in the development team want these aircraft to be balanced and we may be looking at an aircraft being like man this is a terrible aircraft it, it just absolutely is the worst plane it has no advantages all these other aircraft are better than it but if we tease away at these stats, maybe we can discover something about that platform. We can make it work. And I, I've talked about in the comments before that I, I really revel in the idea of finding an aircraft that's terrible and trying to tease out the details to make that aircraft more viable. Because then when you start to make something like that work, one, it, there's a sense of gratification when you're flying around the battlefield and people have written you off as a useless platform. And then you're able to post really good scores. And two, uh, I actually start to really enjoy those platforms like you you figured it out and like you have like almost like a like a relationship with that platform from flying with that airframe for so long so uh, maybe I'm just a little bit sentimental in that respect but uh, that's that was the name of the game for this video was to talk about some of the stats that maybe we don't fully understand and and maybe i don't fully understand it maybe i'm misreading these so you guys hit me up in the comments let me know your thoughts and uh i'd love to hear what you guys have to say i'll catch you on the next one